Hey everyone, how you doing today? I'm going to take another look at the workshop and see what was out there. and got a lot of very cool creations to check out today. Uh, kind of a variety of different things, which is really cool. And at the very end of the video too, I want to show an update to something that I shown in last week's video. It has to do with the Star Trek ship. There's a particular feature on it I missed and I wanted to kind of check that out again. So that will be the last creation shown, um, uh, that, that specific feature. Um, Anyway, the first creation here today is the HD-1 Salvager Reforged Eden by Ente. And uh, this is a uh, very cool looking salvaging uh, SV here. Um, super, super detailed. I love the uh, the accents and it, it kind of, uh, I don't know, has a lot of uh, realistic uh, qualities to it, which is really cool. I mean, about as realistic as you get inside of Imperium. Um, and the uh, detail is uh, phenomenal again. It's uh, very, very detailed with the texturing, with all the accents, decoration, decals, got the rust on it. Uh, it's uh, a really, really cool looking creation here. Love the block work on it as well. And one of the uh, primary features here that uh, really gets me on the body too is the asymmetrical front end on it, um, which that looks great. I think this. Uh, pilot uh, cab area over here it looks really 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 cool and then it has all its uh, salvaging uh, pieces off to the one side there and then you got a Gatling gun up there just in case you gotta shoot at the occasional drone or something that gets gets in front of you uh, could be uh, all kinds of things uh, ground troop or something like that too um, really really cool creation here it's I mean it looks like it's quite to the point uh, looks like it's uh, running some pretty beefy thrust on here as well, uh, especially forward. Uh, I'd have to get off the ground a little bit to see its lift thrust, but it looks like there's a, a number of those down over there. And then uh, the reverse thrust is kind of in the middle between the uh, the cab area and the uh, salvaging area. That's, that is cool. Got to check out this cab area here. Oh, look at that. That's neat. Oh, that's like Imperium's version of like a gullwing door. You see on a Lamborghini or something like that. But no, oh, that's cool. I, I like how it uh, opens up on the side and the top. It gives you a pretty easy way to get in this um, with the uh, the double door set up there. And it looks like it's going to have a really cool uh, visible uh, view here from this cab as well. I like seeing those uh, the uh, deco pieces out front there with the uh, the caution on there and the uh, the actually the, the railing parts that are used for that making kind of a metal frame to hold that in place or kind of like more of a, a guardrail so you don't you know if you get too close to something you don't ram the uh, glass window here and that is interesting on what's going on here too with how this cockpit nose is Turn on. So there is glass. Okay, so it is surrounded by glass. It's just, yeah, you don't see the glass very much. It almost looks like this is sticking out of it, but it's not. The glass is actually wrapped around there. So I definitely assume that this uh, cockpit area, especially with the ventilator in there, is an airtight enclosed space as well. Which is, uh, that's cool. That's cool. It's uh, really small um, and, and it appears to be quite open, but it is uh, actually airtight. It's a cool feature there too. This uh, diagonal window there, kind of uh, with the thin blocks on the outside uh, to uh, complement that angle. Gives you a nice like side side window off there. Oh, very cool, very cool creation here. Anyway, let's let's take a look at some numbers here. So uh, unlock level 20, size class one, uh, 73 forward, 40 strafing, 85 lift, 56 reverse, 85 down. Really high uh, roll y'all and pitch numbers on here as well it's a uh, again pretty thrusty creation here I imagine it uh, kind of looks like uh, depending on how much storage it has it kind of looks like it could uh, be very usable in high gravity environments as well uh, CPU wise on this uh, looks like we're pretty pretty light on CPU it's not going anywhere cl close to a core 9 uh, CPU on it actually would be uh, a single basic and two improved cores, so it's avoiding the expensive uh, or more expensive advanced CPU cores on it entirely. Um, that also helps bring uh, the build cost down on this, which is, uh, yeah, two hour and ten minute build time on here. And these are industrial multi-tools, which is, yeah, that's cool. So, and you don't have to 
position it and hop in a turret and do a little bit and then reposition you can just kind of uh chew up the whole uh, creation and uh get it salvaged flying around um what i am curious about on here is the storage let's see what's going on with that so harvest controller 14,670. that's that's pretty decent that is pretty decent i would definitely say this thing could get that uh cargo around with its thrust performance in high gravity environments uh, we also have an ammo controller at 250 so that's all you need for what's going on here with uh weaponry which is i believe just a single uh um, gatling gun on it so that i mean you could uh you could load a lot of rounds in a 250 uh ammo controller for that so that is not a problem at all we also have some spotlights on here yeah very very cool very nice uh creation here uh, so again, yeah, this is the HD1 Salvager Reforged Eden by Ente. Very, very cool. I did notice that the same author has another creation on the workshop that is for Reforged Eden 2. Um, I didn't want to try to uh, show that right now. I've got to, uh, over the weekend, I'm going to try to uh, dive into Reforged Eden 2 a little bit. And I noticed that we're going to start seeing a lot more uh, Reforged Eden 2 creations, I'm sure, as it's getting developed. And uh, I would want to be able to show those as well. Right now, I'm I don't have that uh, set up to do so. So, and I got I want to learn some uh, bells and whistles with it myself. So, uh, so I at least have some idea what I'm talking about. All right. So the next creation here is the SM14 cargo rack reforged by Garman, and uh, this is a uh, Helios type module, I do believe. I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Oh, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. This thing is, uh, this thing is cool. Again, uh, so like a Helios type creation. There, there's a lot of them out there. I've got some as well, and some other creations that support Helios modules, and that's kind of what this is. A ship that you'd park into the main ship, and it does a specific function. Like in this case, it's all about storage, and I do believe it's going to be a quite a lot of storage as well. Um, really cool looking uh, aesthetics on here too. I love the uh, the use of the like uh, I don't know, staircases and stuff that are on here. Uh, very industrial looking, and also these um, I believe these are actually going to be our storage or our, our uh, cargo extensions here. Yeah, all the, all these areas are here. So it's actually like legit too. You look at this and it's not just cosmetic. It's these are actual uh, storage bays on the uh, creation here we'll definitely have to look at how much storage this has on it looks like it's going to have a uh, quite a significant amount yeah very cool let's try to figure out what is going on with the numbers down over here maybe nothing it's just more of an industrial look here or maybe these are uh, these storage bays are all numbered oh maybe that's it oh 29 6 uh 617 Oh, that's an interesting touch on there. Yeah, like all of them have numbers going down the uh, the sides here. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's, uh, I want to walk in this a little bit and see how this actually uh, works out when you're using it in game here. So let me go up the uh, staircases. Uh, and then we've got this whole floor here. It's got some extra, uh, obviously, more cargo boxes or cargo pallets and things in here as well. Quite a few of them. So that's great if you wanted to uh, sort a lot of uh, items, you know, your weapons, your armor mods, uh, meds, whatever whatever else is in there. Oh, look at that. It's got one of these lights. This is uh, just one of those lights I don't see very much. And I've honestly, I've, I've hardly ever used it uh, myself. Uh, I always don't think about it. But um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of interesting. Give it some nice light in the area here. And just a sample size here. Okay, so it's 640K cargo i believe probably all these are going to be 640k yeah no the, this this is really cool it's kind of open architecture it does look like up up here in the pilot area we do have a uh, airtight zone uh for piloting the ship and getting it parked into a uh a bay and we do have uh some information here too about uh power saving features uh which is really cool it's got a dock mode and then you can turn off oxygen prevent o2 alarm yeah, obviously, it won't need any oxygen if you're not uh, currently piloting the ship. 
yeah, very cool. Very cool creation here. I got a, yeah, I think we might have actually got this in on game already, too. Or maybe we didn't yet. But we're definitely going to have to do that. Um, anyway, very cool. Let's look at some numbers here. So we are unlock level 10, size class 2, uh, 28 forward, 14 strafing, 28 reverse, 28 down. Now keep in mind, this is a module. Um, and, I, and I assume this has a ton of cargo storage on it. And there's no way it could move this cargo, if it was full, with its own thrust power. But again, it's a module. It's meant to park into a larger ship that can move it. And that's exactly what's going on here. So if you look at these numbers and, and once I get to the storage and look at that and you say, oh, there's no way that could work, it, it works perfectly fine due to the nature of the creation. Um, so that's I just want to throw that out there. Uh, six hour and ten minute build time. Uh, no use of uh, Estrum or Zacosium at all or much of anything super special. Uh, pretty uh, basic uh, resources involved in this, um, which is really cool CPU-wise. Light on CPU as well, very light on CPU. Um, in fact, I think this is just a single basic CPU core and your main core. So, yep, that's all that's going on in here too. So that, you know, again, because of the lack of the other cores, it does bring the cost down, especially with other types of materials, uh, which, are, uh, which is really, really cool as well. So now, the moment of truth. How much storage do you have? Um, and oh my god, these are all 640s, aren't they? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, I guess that makes sense with the name of it. The SM14 just so happens to have 14 640k cargo bays in it. <laughs> I, 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 I get it now. I get it. And that's, that's cool. And then we got cargo pallets. Looks like they have uh, names in there um, and a bunch of boxes as well uh and they're all like labeled too obviously you know whoever's using it could uh rename this to whatever type of goods are going to put in there but it's sorted uh alphabetically for the most part right now which is pretty interesting maybe all these mean something but i don't think so a b b c c d i think it's just so they they appear in the correct order when you're viewing the, the list here um just a guess i don't know i don't know if that's that's true or not but uh That'd be my first guess, but yeah, very very cool uh, creation here. Also has a detector on there too. So um, if you spawn this in a little bit away from the uh, the creation you want to park it to, uh, you can uh, use your detector and try to find that creation. I know uh, it's uh, difficult to find things in space with the game because the draw distance and things is very low um, in space. So you got to practically be in sight distance to even have a detector show you it's there. Um, but uh, that works. That works. I like this. Uh, I like this uh, triangular uh, formation up here with the uh, uh, the decals over it too. That's uh, uh, looks really good. Anyway, again, this is the SM14 cargo rack reforged by Garman. Very very cool, Grayson. Uh, definitely uh, plan on getting this in our current playthrough, uh, as we do have a Helios as well. So that would be a awesome solution for. Uh, massive amount of cargo storage. All right, so the next creation here, this is the CMS-6 Scout by Min Min. And, uh, well, I already know this one has a warp drive. Oh, pretty pretty obvious on that. That is a pretty cool uh, way to do it, too, because this is a very small SV. Um, and it's it, the warp drive looks like... Uh, uh, more of a technical like engine or something like like that in there especially with the block work around it creating that frame um, I think that looks really cool really cool here and we've got a, a good amount of guns on here too a couple Gatling guns and uh, I believe these are probably uh, some rocket launchers a four pack of those I like this uh, setup over here too how it kind of uh, goes up a little bit almost like these are intake vents but they actually display uh, looks like a couple uh, uh, container controllers on there. The back side, yeah, it, uh, doesn't look like it's going to break the bank uh, cost-wise either because it's not, uh, you know, it's not very big. It's not running super gi ginormous uh, thrusters and things like that, but it is uh, certainly warp capable. I do want to check on the shield on this as well. In fact, I should have done that on the last two creations. Um, my apologies there. 
I might uh, backtrack a second right after this and take a look at the shield strength on the other. Well, I don't think the uh, storage will have it, but the first creation we looked at. This is cool. This is cool. It's got that uh, really cool uh, profile to it, too. Uh, definitely looks like a fighter. Uh, different uh, color scheme, kind of white and uh, purple with some uh, certain uh, uh, texture light accents on it. Yeah, very cool. Very cool looking creation here. So let's take a look at some numbers. So we are unlock uh, 15. Uh, or unlock level 15, size class 0.32. Very small creation. Uh, 35 forward, 18 strafing, 35 lift, 18 reverse, 18 down. Uh, 47 minute and 19 second build time. So really, um, really quick to get in game for uh, an SV with a warp drive for sure. Um, yeah, nothing here is going to break the bank at all either. A uh, smidgen of uh, Estrum and Zacosium, but hardly any. That's probably uh, because of the weaponry on here, or or maybe the warp drive. I'm not sure. But uh, four rocket launchers, a detector, and two Gatling guns. CPU-wise, uh, inexpensive on CPU as well. Um, this will translate to... I don't mess anything up here. Um... It's like a basic and two improved CPU cores. So again, avoiding the advanced CPU cores, which uh, definitely cuts down the overall cost of this. Uh, Storage-wise, we have an ammo controller at 375 and a harvest controller, interesting, at 375 as well. Um, so yeah, it kind of looks like you could set this up with some kind of harvesting uh, item on it. Um, other than that, a harvest controller works just like a uh, regular controller, except if you do add a harvesting item, uh, then it will collect that, where a regular storage controller would not. So, um, yeah, there's, there's no issues with that as all, at all. If you were limited to only putting uh, harvest harvested uh, goods in a harvest controller, um, that would be a different story, but uh, that's not how the game works. So, yeah, very, very cool there. Um, and also, I just want to see... Yeah, it does have a shield as well. 1440 on its shield strength. That's cool. I mean, for the CPU cost of this creation versus having a warp drive and a shield and some guns um, and some storage, it's, uh, yeah, really uh, economical way to get around. And you could uh, definitely tour the solar system uh, maybe beyond that, depending where you're at in the, uh, in the galaxy with this uh, SV here. And it, uh, again, it's nice uh, peace of mind having that shield in there as well. Um, yeah, very cool. So again, this is the CMS-6 Scout by Min Min. Very cool creation there. All right, so I'm gonna fly back over here a second. I wanna take a look at the shield strength uh, of this creation here. And it's also 1370. Um, and this again is on the HD-1 Salvager RE by Ente. Uh, something I forgot to look at. I don't believe this creation here will have a shield at all. And it doesn't. Okay, so. Alright. Just, just good to know there. So, so the next creation. Uh, let's go in this order here. I've got something else sitting off to the side. Uh, we'll look at that after this one. Uh, so this is the uh, Q38916PAT by Commander uh, Cat Catron. And this looks like it is a HV uh, combat tank here. Um, and uh, definitely looks like it. Uh, the styling on here is really, really cool. Interesting color scheme, too. It's uh, You got a kind of a two-tone uh, gray and black with these uh, uh, fairly high-intensity uh, orange uh, color accents on here as well. Really cool uh, block work here with the thin blocks going around the front of uh on either side here and it's kind of recessed a little bit in the middle here we've got a lot of launcher or well, turret positions and it does have some launcher positions in here as well kind of looks like I, if i were to guess just by seeing what's go, going on here obviously you see you see the weapons or the, the launchers over here and these are i believe plasma um yes plasmas and there's three of them and then there's a an antenna right here, and I bet you, I bet you, if we look at the CPU, there wasn't quite enough CPU to get that fourth one on here. That would be, I'm just, again, just taking a wild stabbing guess. It'd be, uh, 
a nice way to make it look cool when you're kind of like kind of stuck there with the cpu you know you don't want to go past a certain point but you want to get as much stuff on it as you can um and this is doing that let's look at the rest of this this is uh that looks that looks really cool i gotta say i mean that's a, it's those new blocks it's doing a really nice round formation there but it just kind of it fits really well on the creation and because it's so smooth i mean uh when you look at this and, and think like hey this is actually made out of voxel blocks um when you see stuff like this it it throws it off so much that you you, you look at the creation and it's like is it really made of voxel blocks um and that that's a cool thing and that's a good thing um when you can uh, just kind of make it look like it's not made the way it is um and that's uh definitely love to see that but that yeah great looking styling there i love all the accents the color scheme and the extra details all over on the uh, the hall here as well. And it looks like we got a way on board too, or at least into a back room area. Um, and then as in weaponry, obviously quite a lot of guns on here. It looks like we got some, uh, well, we'll look at this at the end too, but I uh, just want to make sure I get this right. So we got some laser turrets, uh, retractable missile turrets. Of course, you got the big old artillery. And I've got some newfound respect on these artillery turrets now too realizing that they can do uh, a couple things I, w I wasn't uh wasn't 100 sure well i didn't even know they could do to be honest um like you can alt fire these if you have the right ammo in your creation and actually um i heard it works with hvs too um actually fire like a uh some kind of emp round with it which is really cool so if you're manually firing that um you could uh potentially hit a shield from out of uh, distance of the POI shooting at you, which I got to explore that a little bit more just uh, to uh, see if that is uh, plausible. But um, it is a cool thing. And not to mention, if you are fighting a POI, and let's just say that, that what I just said doesn't work. I think it does work, but I have to test it. Um, if that doesn't work, you could uh, first take out the shield on the, on the POI and then get out of distance where the POI's turrets couldn't shoot you. Now, if it's a missile base or something, it's a little different can of worms there. But if it's got, you know, normal style turrets on it, uh, you could kind of sit out of range, hop into this weapon here and hit it from a much longer distance than what it can hit you back. So you could literally kind of go systematically blow up all the turrets on the POI uh, from a good safe distance. Um, and that is a nice option with this tank as well. Also, we've got some spotlights on here. And I'm sure this is an armored cockpit. You can tell by the reflection on the glass there which uh, means it's pretty high high hit point area and it is re, uh, recessed back a little bit from the front as well so uh, typically if you're facing your your target and I believe this tank is kind of designed to, to be that way as well um, that uh, the the AI is going to shoot at the first things it sees like these two these here and maybe the center one would be, probably be its likely targets maybe these side ones if it gets a good shot on that but uh, usually uh recess having your cockpit back like this is a, a good thing especially with a, a combat vehicle uh whether that's a hv sv or cv um it's just the nature of how the game works so that'll protect the pile a little bit more let's get aboard here a second let me get out of god mode a second um i'm not sure if i should adjust lighting or not um probably not i don't think there's uh there's a there's a light up there but I uh, just want to take a look around on the inside here, which is kind of cool. So it does have a fair amount of room, and we do have... Uh, oh, yeah. And I'll, I was also corrected on why I couldn't get my spotlight out last time is, is because I took off my helmet. Um, why that matters, I don't know, but it, it does. And that's why I couldn't get the spotlight to work, or, or my, my flashlight, I should say, in the last video. Um, the side effect to not taking off your helmet is you get... Um, uh this uh here like i just i just took off the helmet and of course it turns off my spotlight i guess it, you know if the spotlight was in the helmet i guess that would kind of justify it a little bit but uh the thing is is if you look at the outer uh portions of the screen right now with the helmet off and then I, if i put the helmet back on you see how that it kind of tints it all around there and i was just trying to have it so it wasn't tinted so I had my uh, helmet off, and you can kind of see the difference as I keep on hitting this. Um, and But unfortunately, if you do that, then you can't use a flashlight. 
So it's just kind of a weird, weird scenario though. Anyway, back in the uh, back in into the interior here. Uh, so we got our trauma station, our uh, O2 cargo box over there. Uh, another cargo box. Our CPU blocks are in here. What we got behind the door here. Looks like some uh, upgrade room here. Definitely. Um, well, we got some shield parts in there as well, as well as you can kind of see a shield right there. Um, but yeah, definitely some room to add in stuff. Uh, some more CPU blocks, um, fuel tanks, O2 tanks, uh, all kinds of uh, shield parts, all kinds of things can fit in that size. And we got another one of those on this side as well. So that's cool. So it does have a, a decent amount of upgradability to it. And then there's our armor locker and detector and a clone chamber. So this really has everything you want. I mean, if you're going to do a, a, a combat tank like this, um, one thing I have kind of discovered is I really appreciate uh, some utility function in that tank because often you're fighting the POI, and when you're done fighting the POI, you're going to get out on foot and go through the POI, which is a pretty typical scenario. And having things like a clone chamber and a trauma station um, and even uh, like O2 and stuff like that. That is a really awesome feature to have in uh, a tank like this. Um, you know, so you, you, you go to the POI, something goes wrong, you get killed, you can uh, now spawn right back into the tank, you can heal up. Uh, just a lot of uh, very useful utility features in there. And that is definitely, uh, it's just set up right, basically, in my opinion. I don't think you could set it up any, any better than that. Um, so I, yeah, very cool. Let's look at some numbers here. So to start with, we are, oh, what am I looking at here? There we go. Uh, unlock level 20, size class 1, 40, uh, forward, 29 strafing, 40 reverse. Obviously no up and down. It's a HV, uh, 15 fuel tanks, three oxygen tanks, three hours and, or three hour and 53 minute build time. Uh, we do have the one artillery turret and that's, that's kind of cool stock too. Uh, three plasma cannons, uh, retractable missile turret, uh, miniguns, uh, four laser turrets. So we yeah, got laser turrets would be, uh, and plasma actually would uh, help uh, with shield takedowns. The missile and artillery uh, are really nice to blow up the turrets after the shield is down. And of course you got a minigun uh, turret probably set up to shoot at uh, drones and ground forces and things in the area. CPU-wise, we are at core 9, and it's just, just, oh, it's actually slightly above, isn't it? That doesn't matter. That's so, so slight. It's not going to affect anything on this. Um, but, yeah, that, that is why we see that, that fourth antenna on the front. I'm sure the author would lo love to put in another one of those plasma guns, but it would have uh, ran the CPU too high up to keep it in core 9 specs to do so. So that, that's why the... The antenna is there. Obviously, it's got a lot of room to add some quantum auxiliary cores on the inside. So I'm sure a lot of players would probably add that fourth uh, piece in there. And who knows, maybe even some tier two uh, turrets and things on there once, the, uh, once they provide the CPU for it. But uh, all right, very cool. Let's look at the storage here. Um, so we got an ammo controller at 17,531. And beyond that, a box for guns and tools, box for meds, and our Pentaxa tank. So, yeah, really straightforward. Uh, let's look at the shield strength. Uh, 5,080. Yeah, nice stock shield strength on here. Um, and I want to see, because I was really um, getting tripped up with the uh, HV shield parts that were available. And I want to see... Yeah, this does have the heavy shield generator in, in here stock. Um, I was kind of unable to uh, do that. Let me just show you what's going on here in my my own thing. So if I hop into the parts menu, and I'll just keep this um, where I didn't select anything. Um, I'll try to just keep this neutral here. And if I type in, uh, let's say, heavy shield. Oh, did it come back? It's right. Are you kidding me? It's right there. I swear, okay, no one's going to believe me. I swear the other day I did the same thing. This part did not show up. Couldn't find it anywhere, it, but it's right in front of my face now. So, never mind, never mind. Don't know what happened. I guess, I don't know what I did. I must have done something 
terribly wrong when I was looking at this, uh, but I could not find that heavy shield part available for an HV, only an SV when I looked. Um, but I must have had a filter wrong or something when I searched for it. Um, so I just disproved myself. Anyway, all right. Uh, very, very cool creation here. Again, this is the Q3H916PAT uh, by Commander uh, Katron. All right, so I'm going to hold off on that in just a second. I want to get to this really wild creation over here. This is the CV Build Kit Volume 4 by Alicia. And this is basically a lot of, like, white box um, parts and accents and uh, things that you, uh, if, you if you're if you familiar with uh, the copying and pasting parts from one creation to another, um, just things you could uh, slap onto a uh, creation you're building. Um, some very detailed parts and uh like decorative things or gun positions or just a number of different kinds of parts that would be uh, worthwhile on a CV to add in some uh, decorative block work and things like that, like like stuff like this. I think that looks really, really cool. A lot of these do. I like this, too. I, lo I love what's going on with the uh, the front and back with that, that slight angle there. So those little detail things that I think uh, really can make things look good um, like that. But all kinds of... Uh, block work in and uh like designer pieces like if you had a space on your cv that was about that size you could uh take a look at this set here and uh slop it in like that piece there of course you're gonna have to texture it to match your your creation uh however your creation's textured and i and i understand why the author um or at least you didn't texture any of this because i mean how would you possibly know what kind of uh textures uh whatever creation is going to be using this um would have you know you, you just wouldn't know that so you do have to texture it but that's uh, just some really really cool like block block work and like useful parts you could slap together this would be more akin to something like you'd see in maybe starfield you know with like all the different block parts that you assemble a ship with in that game um this would be kind of like kind of going around that same idea but these are all individually made with obviously voxel blocks instead very very detailed too really cool shaping here yeah, i love this uh this piece too that uh, round cage there that looks that looks impressive that is really sharp um let's look around at some of these other pieces in here too yeah the great thing about a game like this is you can uh, just you know within the limitations of the angles you could do at least uh, just go off the deep end and create all kinds of crazy cool looking th uh shapes and formations and things like that it's uh sky is the limit on that just one one really cool piece after another and then some big larger parts here too like this whole assembly here it almost looks like it would be set up to do the gravity no it's, i don't think it's big enough to do the, the gravity trick there's uh i've seen a couple larger ring style space stations that had offset gravity generators at different directions so you could walk around a internal hallway around the, the whole thing kind of define uh what you would think the gravity would be um which is really cool but this looks like a, a little bit smaller of a ring so it couldn't do that very sharp though very detailed and we've got some internal uh, corridors in here too yeah that's interesting and this is not the only set by this author keep in mind alicia's really been uh working working hard to um Build a lot of support creations for the game. Uh, a lot of that has to do with LCDs as well. Um, but this is a this is a new approach here that I haven't actually seen done. I've seen I've seen uh, build sets for like POIs and things like that. There's a number of those out by uh, various different authors, um, but I have not seen this done yet. And this is not the only one. If you look up on the workshop, there's others um, other creations like this by the same author uh to build out more things yet um but this is yeah it's really really cool a lot of neat block work uh again uh, getting familiar with copying and pasting and uh, the stuff you could do with the the end key tools is you can take a lot of these and slap them on to other creations which is a wonderful idea um so uh, yeah again this is the uh oh man um the cb build kit volume four by alicia 
Very, very cool. All right, so the next creation here, and that is uh, this guy over here. This is a pretty unusual looking uh, open air HV. This is the uh, Hover Warthogger by Fuji. Um, and uh, yeah, really cool. It's kind of, uh, it's got that, uh, Fuji does a lot of like uh, dragon oriented um, creations and things like this. And this has that kind of going on with it too, where you kind of got some eyes here and, uh, or maybe the eyes are up here. This is uh, maybe the nostrils. Um, so it, it's kind of like a, a bit of a, like a dragon uh, car. <laughs> but it also has a little bit of that Halo thing going on, like with the uh, Warthog in the Halo games. Uh, you can kind of tell by how the uh, this journal midsection is set up and uh, the journal shape of it. Um, so it's kind of got a couple different influences going on there. Like if, uh, if a Warthog uh, uh, wanted to resemble a dragon. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, this is this is cool. It actually looks like it's got a lot of function built in here too. So we got obviously our uh, pilot seat, co-pilot seat, a uh, couple uh, Gatling guns up top. We've got uh, we can do some mining. We can cut some trees. Uh, out the back here, we've got a trauma station, armor locker. Um, I went down this more embedded things in here. I'm just not seeing. Oh yeah, we got some vents over here. Looks like, uh, oh wow, we got uh, space for more parts in here. Looks like a, uh, yeah, this looks like a 2 by 3 location for a shield. Um, I, I'm guessing it doesn't have a shield in it right now, but we will look at the specs. And then we got a controller in here and some, a little bit of room for some, well, maybe, yeah. I think I think you could probably squeeze some other things in here as well up, up on the sides there. If you needed, uh, I don't know, more other parts, uh, maybe some extra shield pieces or a generator or something like that. Um, now we get, you can see the CPU block there. We got a detector kind of built in. It's really interesting too if you look at the uh, at the, the the center here, like where the center console of the car would be here. It's almost like you're kind of like looking at like the transmission or something under here, and it's uh, there's glass plate there, so you can kind of see the uh, the block work below. That's uh, just another nice touch. And then we got our main core right up front there. That's ah, cool. Very cool. Looks like a nice uh, get around utility creation for a couple players. Um, definitely nice uh, having the uh, the clone chamber on here as well. If you do uh, have some unfortunate thing happen, you can always get right back uh, if you got this nearby, which is uh, very, very cool. All right. Well, anyway, let's look at some numbers here. So, unlock level 12, size class 1, uh, 26 forward, 6 strafing, uh, 13 reverse. Uh, we got two fuel tanks, two oxygen tanks, uh, 39 minute and 40 second build time. Very inexpensive. Um, nothing here. I was surprised. I thought may, the trauma station would invoke um, some higher type of resource, but it maybe it does. Maybe it's the cobalt, but that, yeah, that ain't much. Um, so... Yeah, very, very inexpensive creation here. We do have a harvester, two drills, a detector, and two Gatling guns on it. CPU-wise, uh, pretty light on CPU. I'm now wondering if this was, in fact, a vanilla creation um, on the CPU, though. I bet you it probably was. Uh, let's get devices here. I'm going to hit this real quick. I, and, yeah, so we, it just is running a basic CPU core. Um, I believe this will check out just fine with uh, vanilla. Um, and if you're uh, playing using it in Reforge, it uh, looks like it's it's pretty it's pretty fine too. But it'll probably need a single improved core added to it. Uh, in the uh, and there's room in the back to do that. So um, definitely can use it in vanilla or I'm sorry Reforge Eden as well. Uh, but I do believe this was a vanilla built creation here. Um, so, yeah, again, very, very cool. Let's take a look at the storage on it. So we got an ammo controller at 750, a uh, container controller at 688, and another container controller also at 688. We do have a fridge in here, two fridges actually, and then uh, a harvest controller at 1492. Uh, and obviously, yeah, it does need a harvest controller. It does have a... Uh, you know, tree cutting ability as well as a couple, uh, couple drills. So this really could pull off a lot of uh, 
especially like early game functionality it's not super expensive at all to bring in um, and you can get some trees you can do some mining you can shoot up some uh, some of the locals uh, <laughs> Uh, you can do all your stuff, you can spawn back here, you can heal up, you can swap your armor out. Uh, just a lot of functionality to it, and it's uh, for a small package and a, and a small price. So, again, very, very cool here. This is the Hover Warthogger by Fuji. Alright, so now, I wanted to get to something uh, on this creation here, and this is obviously the USS Nimitz. And this was by... Uh, by Don 2K7 with uh, Alicia uh, building a whole big set of very fancy LCDs for it. And that has to come to what I missed when I showed this on last week's episode. Is It has a red alert mode on it and I didn't check it out. And I know a lot of those LCDs were tailored for that. And there's probably a lot of work to implement this uh, red alert mode. And I totally uh, didn't look at it. So that's, that, that's what's going on here now. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust the lighting. Um, and let's try to get kind of dark, but not super, super dark. Uh, and then let me hit a P menu option of uh, Red Alert. And I want to now hop aboard here and see. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So we can already see the difference. Just to, make, just to show you what's going on here. Like... Uh, you see that alert condition there. If I were to turn this off, that just disappears. I never even knew it was there, to be honest. So throughout the ship, there's going to be uh, things and a lot of LCDs that change or appear to uh, do this red alert condition on it, which I think is really, really cool. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's try to make my way up towards the bridge area i bet you it's probably a more obvious there but even throughout here look at that another uh, alert signal there uh, alerts over here you definitely know if you're in a combat uh mode here uh yeah alert all over the place wow yeah i i don't think you would uh not know you're in alert mode here that that's cool though i mean obviously you'd have to let the whole crew know wherever they may be on the ship now let's get up here. I think we're getting closer to... Oh, uh, no, we might have to go up another another floor here. Even inside of here, too. Like, the, even the engineers would know about this. And uh, a lot of these LCDs, too. You see where it says Red Alert there? You see the, uh, the buttons changing colors and things like that? That's, again, all part of this option here. Like, if I turn that off, you see, notice how the LCD kind of changed colors. No longer says Red Alert on it. Just little fine details like that, like... You'd have to uh, you see how it changed the, the color of the whole display here. That's uh, I mean that that takes some work and effort to, to pull that off, and that's is definitely why I wanted to um, uh, look at this again and really check out this red alert mode. It wasn't like a a quickie little little something something to do. This was uh, pretty uh, pretty ambitious uh, to pull this off, and I'm sure a lot of work. Um, a lot of LCDs and things to make and create and place and animate and the whole ball of wax. So now we're in the bridge here in Red Alert and we also have the spinning Red Alert. Uh, Reforged only lights, which are really, really cool. And all these displays here are obviously kind of in red right now. We got a uh, condition red over here. Again, just to show you the difference, if I get back in here and shut off Red Alert, you'll see that it's condition green. We also have a lot of other things that are taking place, like uh, a shield went in front of this uh, front window here. Or not a shield, but uh, these guys over here, the uh, the big uh, blast doors. Um, now let me just hit, hit the red alert again. And yeah, just, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Just uh, it really adds uh, a lot of immersion and things like that, too. And these were uh, one complicated set of lcds to uh, pull off and uh it's really n even more complicated when they're animating and have different like lcd conditions and things like that and obviously they're, they're done with individual lcds um you can't like actually have an lcd change what's on the lcd after the fact but you can uh, overlay other lcds over the top of it or just turn that one off and turn on another lcd in the same location 
with different graphics on it. Um, and that's how, how it's done. Um, and that's, it's just really, really cool. So, yeah, um, throughout the ship, uh, yeah, blast doors and things will close down. Uh, all the red alerts go up uh, in many different locations on the ship. And uh, it's, just, it's just really, 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 really cool to see here. Um, yeah. So, again, this was showed last week, so I'm not going to tour the whole ship again. But I did did want to check out that feature there. I thought it just a really, really cool feature. And other than that, that is everything for today. Um, the last thing I wanted to do, though, um, I didn't really uh, say anything about this earlier. Um, I just wanted to show one thing here. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. The, me, uh, the tank I have currently on the workshop. Let me get the right version here. Um the drone hatch. I did. Uh, I did get this to work, and I wanted to show you what I was trying to explain in the uh, the text for this, or on the uh, on the uh, Steam Workshop page. Uh, it's a little hard to explain exactly what's going on, but here, let me. Uh, here, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna get out of God mode. I want to show you how to deploy the drone, at least how I figured out how to do it the best. Um, so essentially, if you uh, are in this compartment here. You'd walk up on the double dots, face forward in the creation, kind of look at the front of the tank. Um, and here's the, the tricky part. Um, you can't just, if I just try to deploy the drone as I'm standing here, it will not work. Um, and if I try to jump up and hit it, it won't work. But if I jump up and hit it as soon as I land like that, then it does work. And that's what I was trying to explain on there. And for the most part, I got it to work probably a good 75% of the time following that um, and then you have your drone hatch and yeah in comments when I showed this tank last and I, I removed the drone hatch there's a lot of people that wanted it back and I agree I wanted it back too so it uh, but I had to like change it around again and then I swapped out the door I had some louvered doors there um, and I, I put in this one it's a little bit bigger it made it a little bit easier to get the drone out um, and I kind of changed the position of it as well um, one, a uh, couple other updates that I did do to this before I released it is I really, um, I had a, a smidgen of extra CPU and there's a couple functions, um, like I had no O2 dispenser in it and I really wanted that as well. I mean, I, I want the trauma station, I want the clone chamber, um, the armor locker is great, uh, but yeah, you couldn't breathe the air and so I wanted to fix that up and then I also, uh, slopped in the fridge as I had, a enough cpu for that they're super cheap on cpu on that so other than that um that's pretty much what what took place i changed this around a little bit so the lcd isn't clipping through uh the door frame area um and whatnot but uh, yeah when i was building this i really wanted to slop in a heavy shield um and i couldn't find the part um literally so i ended up going with this one but i got more weaponry installed because of that because the heavy shield is more cpu as well so kind of a trade-off more guns for less shielding stock but uh other than that um that's all, all i really wanted to show on that one as well and uh yeah i guess that is it for today's video and you all have yourself a great weekend and i will talk to you later